Hey everybody and welcome to the channel. I'm the Leaky Valve or my name is actually Mike. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the brand new P770s from TaylorMade, the 2024 models. I was fortunate enough to be selected by the My Golf Spy Forum to do a test for these irons. I'm doing this test alongside six people total, including myself. Two of us are doing the P770s, two more are doing the P7CBs, and two more are doing the high toe wedges. I'm gonna quickly get to the unboxing. I've done this video along with a whole bunch of other ones probably a hundred times, and I can never seem to get it right. So I'm gonna quickly just jump to the unboxing and do my initial thoughts or let it play for my initial thoughts because I've already actually recorded the unboxing. Then I'll come back sitting with you as I am and we'll talk about a little bit of the technology and I guess how I feel about them looks this that and the other. Before we get started quickly thank you so much to my golf spy for this opportunity. I am very grateful and thankful that I have the chance to do this and to bring a review to you the viewer and the reader on the my golf spy forum. If you're watching this and you want to know how to get involved go to the my golf spy forum sign up up, start looking through the threads as soon as you sign up you'll get introduced to where to go and start posting if this is something that you think you might be interested in please go and start doing your own reviews do reviews on your own clubs do reviews on gear do reviews on tech anything golf related go and start doing those reviews it really helps to i guess boost yourself in terms of the eyes of the my golf spy forum moderators seeing people doing their own reviews as opposed to signing up and just hoping that they get picked to do clubs that are quite expensive if i do say so myself so without further ado let's quickly get to the actual unboxing and then we'll talk about the clubs before we get started here huge shout out to cmc design and my golf spy i am super excited about this this thing fits okay it, do it doesn't fit the greatest i'll be completely honest it doesn't fit the greatest on my putter but that's not an issue. This is absolutely fantastic. I'm really glad that my golf spy finally did something like this as well. I have a suggestion for all the customization people out there. My golf spy, if you're listening, ferals, MGS ferals, or with the little, with the spy, right? Just a little, just a little, just a little hidden nugget. Okay. I have been waiting for these for so long, but everybody else, well, most people got theirs. And I was sitting here in Canada, waiting for everything to come and sitting upstairs doing nothing and they showed up. So I'm, I'm super excited. I, I actually, I can't say how thankful I am that I have this opportunity to do this and to bring, to bring this to you because I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube about these clubs. Comparison from last year's, the 23 P770 to this P770, people are saying that this is a bit more forgiving which could help me. They're a little bit smaller, more players iron oriented. The best performance golf brand in the world. I'm, I'm surprised it doesn't say kapow, kaboom, baby. All right, let's just get to it. Oh my lordy. So we got a packing slip that shows everything. We did absolutely nothing crazy. The only difference is for me, I went with quarter inch long, and I went with five extra wraps on my grip because I didn't have the ability, why well, there was the ability, but I wanted something a little different um, to play a mid-size grip. So I just built these up to mid-size with five extra wraps. So I guess we'll see how they feel and how they, how they fit. For the grips, I was really looking forward to being the only one who decided to pick these, but one of my fellow testers picked the exact same grip the Lambkin Crossline 360 in gray. So shout out to, I believe it was Burnsy who picked these grips. My friend, he has good taste. And for the shaft, we went with the KBS C Taper Light because I really, really like a lighter shaft. For me, it, it's just, I get tired of swinging 120 grams, 130 grams for 18 holes. It just, it just gets a little bit heavy and annoying. But my goodness, are these absolutely stunning. They looked stunning when When you end up getting them and you go and, and I went and got fit, they looked stunning. But my God, seeing these things up close is just absolutely phenomenal. Nothing on the actual grip to show anything else. There's no logos, no nothing. All this stuff's coming off. I can't stand that. But could you imagine my golf spy with just a little MGS sitting right there or the little, the spy? Oh, I think that would look absolutely lovely. All right. First peel, try and do this 
Oh man, I'm nervous. Just one and done. Look at how absolutely stunning these irons are. I do love the brushed silver on them. I'm, I've never really been too big of a fan of like the flashy chrome on anything. It's always kind of frustrated me because it just like, it takes away from trying to see if you get, like you could get a weird shot of light or sun on you and next thing you know, you got your iron trying to stare you down. Welcome back for the second time. I just finished recording this video and the audio didn't work. So hats off to you, microphone. So I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. If not, then you just wanted to see a quick unboxing. I can guarantee you that the rest of the clubs all turned out flawlessly, aside from one that I will mention later, the six iron, the sticker for the shaft. I, th I think when I was pulling everything out, it ended up just kind of catching on the foam. The foam is phenomenal, right? It kept everything safe. The box came in really good shape as well. So no comments or no issues there. If you're still here again, thank you. If you want to hear about me really quickly, I'm a lefty from Canada. My season's about to end. All the testing that I'm going to be doing or most of the testing I'm going to be doing for the next month probably be indoors in the sim. I'm going to be comparing these to my current gamers as well as my other set of clubs that I have, the Callaway Apex Pros. They're a, a 2015 model, so it'll be comparing something similar to the TaylorMade P7 CB 770 as well as a cast game improvement club, very much a game improvement club. Um, currently sitting around a 7-8 handicap. My big miss is a big pull or just a straight push and that's just hands and swing path. So my what's in the bag is on the My Golf Life forum. I'll post a link or I'll put a link to that entire thread in the comments here if you want to get involved. Um, yeah, let's talk about these clubs. First of all, how beautiful they are. I was pretty impressed with how good they look when I went for my fitting. My fitting was phenomenal and I learned a lot about the way that the fitting process works. It was interesting for me to see the difference between just different shafts in different flexes and different weight ranges but these simply do look stunning they absolutely beautiful i really do like and do appreciate that they are completely simple compared to last year's model there's no chrome there's no extra there's nothing it's p770 logo tailor-made bug in the corner that's it technology wise they haven't changed too much but They've refined what they did with last year's P770 to make this more forgiving. The speeds pocket is still there, helps with low face shots in the four through seven. Flighted CG is still there, which helps to get the ball in the air with the longer irons and keep the ball down with more spin in the lower irons. Speed foam air is in there, which allows for better weight distribution with the use of tungsten weights. The speed foam air and um, the Ford face, we'll talk about in a sec, help with vibration, sound, dampening, and overall feel. I guess my only knock on these clubs and with most manufacturers, if I'm being honest, is the use of the word forged. When I think forged, I think fully forged iron. I don't think cast head, cast body, and forged face. I confirmed that with my fitter. I asked him straight up, I was like, is it a forged head and a forged face together. He said, no, it's cast. And then the face is welded on, but the face itself is welded and then milled. I'm not sure if it's milled, then welded on, or one or the other, but the, for the face itself is welded on, the face is milled, and the face is forged. But putting forged on an iron like this, I think is a bit of a lie, personally. I don't think I would ever call this a forged iron. It is a cast iron, lack of a better term, steel iron, a soft steel iron. But other than that, still, they, they look phenomenal. Hitting them, they did sound slightly clicky when I did my testing or sorry, my fitting, but not super clicky like my current gamers, the Acer XV. There's really not a whole lot else to say about these other than I just, I absolutely love the way that they look. The four iron to me doesn't look too daunting down the line. I really do appreciate the fact that down the line for the four iron, the line on the back that kind of bumps out a little bit, it isn't prominent. When you sit, when you set the club down at a dress, you actually can't see it. That was one of the things that I was a little bit worried about was if at a dress, I'm looking down and I see this big ridge on the back of the club too. And it was going to be something that I thought was going to be distracting, but it wasn't and it isn't so far. Sorry. Quickly about my fitting. My fitting went really well. Learned a lot about different shafts, weights, and seeing them firsthand what just a couple of shots will do to the height, to the spin, to your tendencies and just how they feel overall, where the shaft loads. It was really interesting to just be able to fire one shaft and take it out 
I've never actually gone for a full fitting like that before. So it was, it was really, really interesting. They gave me this hat. They also gave me some balls and Mark, my fitter recommended that I play the TP5X to help increase my spin a little bit because I don't spin the ball as much as he would have liked to see. Um, ultimately, when we settled on the seat taper light, it was kind of a bit of a gamble. My golf spy form, please don't get mad. We tried the seat taper light in an extra stiff shaft and I hit this shot with it. That one felt good. Yeah, that was good. Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen that done. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Spectacular, give me 14 of them right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Do you know what's in here? I don't care, don't Should... tell me. No. Do that again. 14 of them, please. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that I hit that shot. Mark had never seen that and I've never done something like that before. So we both kind of looked at each other and it was like, this is the right shaft for you. It just needs to be in a stiff. Cause I told him, I was like, it feels very boardy. It feels like I have to swing hard to get it to load. But when I swung the dynamic gold mid 115, which is like the stock shaft that you get out of this iron, if you buy it off the shelf, I, the, that, that soft shaft or the stiff shaft felt better compared to an extra stiff. So we agreed this is the right shaft for us. We're gonna do that in a stiff. We're gonna add a quarter of an inch and adding a quarter of an inch has made it the same as all of my other clubs, which is kind of concerning because if I didn't add that quarter inch, I'm pretty sure these clubs would have all been a little bit short for me. Maybe my clubs are built that way and I just, I just didn't know it, but fitting was great overall. Did hit the CB as well. The CB feels very, very buttery soft. Congrats to the two guys testing it. You guys have the softest clubs on the market now. And I guess the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about is the cost of these because these aren't cheap. In Canada, they will run you off of the shelf if I was to just go to or you were to just go to TaylorMade website and click buy and click the dynamic gold mid 15 and click stiff or regular or extra stiff and then you click add to cart your total cost would be sophie $2, that's in canadian but that's a lot of dollars so are these clubs worth that amount of money are they worth upgrading from your current set of ce or of or your, your current set of p770s potentially maybe yes maybe no who are these clubs for how forgiving are they these are all things that i'm going to answer if you want to follow along i'll post the link to the my golf spy forum thread that I'm currently a part of for this test. Follow along there. You can see what I'm doing. That's where I'm going to post most of the stuff. I'm probably going to try and get into the simulator and post a comparison between, I think I'm going to do five, eight and pitching wedge for all three sets of clubs. See if there's any major differences in distances and um, spin rates, things like that dispersion. But most of what I have to say is all going to be on the forum and probably all in text. But for now, I guess I just got to wait. It's cold outside. I really hope I get a couple of rounds in, at least get out to the range. And if I'm lucky, I can give an even better first impressions of these because they are absolutely stunning. And I once again, can't thank the My Golf Spy Forum enough for this opportunity. I, I'm really, really thankful. Thank you guys so much. <sighs> Well, I think that's it for me. If there's anything else you want to know, if there's anything else I missed, anything at all, please fire it in the comments. If you have any questions over on the forum, feel free to tag me and let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer anybody's questions. Thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one, probably in the simulator next. And yeah, that about does it. Thank you all. Have a good night.